Počkej mi. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Sandcap Guide podcast. I'm very excited to announce we've got a great guest today, uh, Greg Longenhagen. Uh, we go back uh, 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 quite a long way. I don't know if you know, but I've been doing theatre photography for many years. And Greg and I have bumped paths along the way. Um, back when Greg was started out as an actor and he's done many things. You had a production company, I believe. And uh, now is the artistic director of the Florida Rep. So we do have a page on the Sandcap Guide that is dedicated to things to do off the island. So this is definitely a relevant uh, guest to have on. Absolutely. And not only that, Greg's a great, we also great have a page. guy. Do we have a page about the theater? I think we do. I if think we it's don't, on there. We should do. I, I think, think it's do. on there. Yes, yeah. we do. Yes, it is we on do. There. So, uh, Greg, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Nick. Thanks for bringing me on. It's great to be here. Yeah. Can you just tell us a little bit about the Florida Rep and how you got involved and what were your early experiences with it? Because I know you've been there in different formats over the years. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. No. Happy to. Absolutely. So we uh, uh, Florida Rep was started in uh, 1998, right, in downtown Fort Myers by uh, Robert Cassiopo, my good friend Robert, and. Uh, and his wife, Carrie Lund, and I was part of the uh, the initial uh, ensemble, if you will, uh, of actors and performers at, uh, at Florida Rep, and I've been connected with the theater uh, since that time, working in different capacities as a, mostly as an actor, but um, you know, sometimes as a, as a, uh, a fight choreographer, I do that stuff for the stage, I've enjoyed cool. that over the years, yeah. I and, didn't know that, Greg. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah, yeah, no, I love it. I could show you how to throw a fake punch. <laughs> oh, okay, uh, how about a real one? Uh, uh, not a real one, okay. I'm, not a, I'm no tough guy. <laughs> <laughs> You're a lover, not a fighter. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. But no, you know, I was I was involved with them. We did dialect coaching and things like that. And um, uh, and some directing, stage directing as well. But uh, yeah, I've had a, an affiliation with them for uh, for a long time since we started. Fantastic. So um, you, so tell me, how long have you been back at the Florida Rep? How long have you been uh, as the artistic director? So I uh, started there in 2000, October of 2018 uh, as the artistic director, and I've uh, been there in that position ever since. It's been great. Fantastic. Yep. And good news, this year, uh, just coming up, obviously we all know what's been going on with COVID. Not a good time for in-person theatre. Yeah. Now, they, these guys did some uh, in, ingenious things to uh, keep the theatre going and keeping it alive and actually helped out with this podcast indirectly just by sh with, uh, sharing information about equipment and the mixing board that you can see back there. If Max puts himself full screen back there, you'll actually it's just out of sight, but they use a mixing board very right similar to what Max is using. Yeah. yeah. And they, they had some great ideas to keep theatre coming to the people during COVID. Um, and tell us a little bit about the shows that you put on during that time. Sure. So we, you know, as, as many of you probably know, we we had to close our doors in March of 2020. And, you know, we're a union theater. We're an, uh, an actor's equity union theater. And basically the union said, hey, that's it. You know, you got to shut the doors. So we had to close like we, we had about 48 hours to, to close those doors. And were you mid you were we, we mid were season? We, right? we were. Well, we were just finishing up, Lori. We had we were we had one more show. Gotcha. We, were, we had End one. Of the season. Yeah, it was it was a show we call like the shoulder of the season but we um we had a show that we were so excited to open and we actually had to close it down right after the last dress rehearsal oh wow mm. yeah we were set to, to preview it on a tuesday and on monday we had to close that show so it was all a, the yeah. hard work oh. all the stage had been done it did, yeah, costumes all, everything all of it was put together and they did a beautiful job it was ready to go and um what we did and i'm glad we acted quickly is because we you know using some of that equipment that switching equipment we were able to um um, do a camera, three camera shoot, edit that footage down, and then supply that to the patrons who would have come to see the show. And many of them uh, took that, and it looked really good. I mean, we had we had a great product when we got done with it. Yeah, um, we were really really proud of everybody's work on that. And you also did some outdoor live uh, yeah. productions, didn't you? Yeah. So over the summer, uh, a lot of people are aware of this, but in the in the in our business, you know, it's it's you have to gear up. So so you you make decisions that are going to affect what's going to happen months from then, right? So we it, we decided in the summer that we were going to uh, continue with uh, some performance. Uh, we knew that we were not going to be able to be in our spaces, so we thought, okay, let's continue to on onboard the um, intern actors that we would normally bring in. We bring in six from around the country, uh, and we brought those those actors in, and we decided, okay, we're going to do some uh, outdoor performances with these actors 
uh, who are part of the education program. And uh, we, that's what we did. We mounted a couple of shows outside. Um, we were also uh, really uh, active with our uh, acting conservatory program, which is um, local children, <clears throat> excuse me, who come out, <clears throat> pardon me, to audition. And um, yeah, we did some shows with them. We, we did uh, a brand new uh, conceived musical called Golden, a tribute to the golden age of American musical theater. And that was a mm. great tap dancing and singing. We did it on mm. an outside stage, all lit up, beautiful. Right. And then we also did um, It's a Wonderful Life, the live radio play right before Christmas. And that was that was well received as well. And then smattered in there, um, we did another concert that uh, I directed and we put that together with, um, you know, some more uh, classic Broadway hits. So we, you know, we wanted to have people, we wanted to stay connected our education uh, conservatory program we did um into the woods and godspell so we had we had programming going on awesome. uh, throughout the throughout the uh throughout what would be a regular season right and just uh, in case you're not familiar with the florida rep it's it's an absolutely magnificent uh theater it's, it's when was it actually built the theater do you well know? i do <clears throat> excuse me so the uh the arcade right we're in residence in the arcade theater in downtown fort myers and you'd be surprised i mean people walk through that hallway all the time and they're like wow mm-hmm. is there a theater here you know and i'll and i'll see people looking up and down and i can tell they're either tourists or that they've never been there before and oftentimes i'm assuming oh they're just in town for the weekend but some folks will say no i've been in fort myers for 15 years i'm like you're kidding me i was like do you like live theater yeah i was like how could you have not, not found us in 15 exactly. years i said <laughs> Okay, so because we're right inside that arcade uh, space there underneath the arcade sign on First Street in downtown. Which is a cool it's neon the, sign. It, it's so retro. The and iconic it's sign. Just super, and they just lit it up. It was dark for a long time, wasn't it? It was. The, the it lights was. didn't work, yep, I'm guessing. Yep. That, that's exactly right. And the the, uh, the former owners of that block, the uh, Smith family of uh, uh, Smith Appliances, right. they spent the money to have that refurbished and have that the neon redone and all of that stuff. So, uh, yeah, so it's a it's a working sign it's very cool uh, actually again. when max did his senior pictures we actually used the sign as a backdrop just because it's so cool and retro. you see yeah. people down there taking pictures all the time yeah. yeah and you you asked Lori about the age of the theater i mean it's it is it is a historic theater i, I want to say 1916 is when they built it they actually built it yeah and, cool. it, and it was originally built as a um um you know a, a burlesque style house you know we did vaudeville they had perf- right. different performers magicians singers dancers uh actors you know they right. did plays and things like that back then and it ran that way for a short time about two years and then the movies came in which were that was more profitable right to open up a movie house and then it ran as a movie house for um for a long time before it sort of fell apart and um was resurrected uh, again by a, a dance company actually um a dance school uh with help from um the the um russian dancer um Mikhail Mikhail Barishnikov. Barishnikov. Yeah, oh, wow Barishnikov. Yeah. very cool yeah, yeah, i didn't that, know that yeah, oh, yeah i didn't know that yeah oh. and when was, a, was that do you um, know the 80s i think or? that was i want to say 80s? that that was in the in the late mid to late 80s 90s period in gotcha. there and the city had it for a while and then i think that they um they saw the the arcade and 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 you know the, the they really wanted to bring in and it was either mayor humphreys or uh, his predecessor, I'm not sure, who uh, saw the value of bringing the arts because that, that's what was happening around the country, right? You bring the arts into it and to revitalize an area, and it certainly has done that. Oh, wow, I mean, yeah. Oh, yeah. And if you if, if you knew the the downtown, between. I remember when I first moved here, we were caught, I was a lot younger, obviously, and we wanted to have a night so out. Twenty two years ago. Twenty two years ago, yeah. Or, or, yeah. And so we was so we said let's go out downtown, and everybody was like, oh, there's nothing downtown. And I was like, ah, there must be something going on, but. Uh, literally downtown Fort Myers years ago was all built around the law law, the court system and um, or judicial basically and the support system for that for that that business that industry it was you know deli shops it was lunch spots it was uh, bail bonds. Bail bonds. It was <laughs> yeah, attorneys' offices. Pawn shops. And, and that was it. There was nothing right. down there as far as nightlife and everything. It was there was maybe there was one some or CD two. clubs. Yeah, yeah. CD clubs. Yeah. A couple yeah. of. Right. Sure. But but since the theatre and since now fast forward to today, you go downtown Fort Myers and it's absolutely hopping. I mean, it's busy every weekend. Yeah. I mean, that's uh, where all my friends go. 
Yeah. You go out on the weekends. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, It's Mm -hmm. one of the rare places in Southwest Florida where you can spot an under 30 year old. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. (laughs) And then they have special, um, is it every um, first Friday of the month or something? Art walk. You know, the the art walk, the music walk. Music walk. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think they alternate on, on, uh, on weekends when they do it. I think, I think that one's on one weekend, one's it's like the second and the, and the fourth or something like that. Right. But But that brings, you're right, Lori, that brings in tons of people coming to downtown. Right. Where they actually block off the sidewalks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Definitely worth, if you're down here, it's definitely worth checking it out. Not that you want to leave the island, but but if you you want to. If you want to day off the island, it's definitely worth doing. Yeah. Yeah. And then just going back to the theater a little bit, the, the nice thing about the building is you can totally tell that it was a dedicated theater. It's not one of these buildings that has been adapted into a theater like so many of them have yeah you can tell by the ceiling and by the it's the acoustics cool. in the room it's got a dome ceiling um it, it's got a sloped floor that goes from front to back right these cool um burgundy velvet yeah, chairs yeah, yeah. Yeah. The yeah. 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 which have which have recently been recovered oh, okay. oh. I didn't know. are they still Excellent. like a reddish color yes. oh, they, yeah yeah okay. they, no, they're, they're they're the same the same co- the same color that you love so much yes, yeah. I do. there's that red velveteen <laughs> on there that, yeah. that dark maroon but uh, yeah. but they're even more comfortable oh, oh okay so. very cool and, yeah. then, and then just to go a little bit further what you you know so, uh, looking behind the scenes there's so many times that i go in there and, I, and i'm like i'm blown away by the attention to detail of things that you you as a as a theater goer that might not necessarily see and i think one of the one of the 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 things that you you can be blown away by is the the, the quality of the sets like if you see the detail that goes into the sets quite often i'll be on the stage um taking pictures after the show's finished and we'll be staging shots and it's just incredible the amount of work that goes into setting up a stage like that and then to be able to flip it um you know sometimes in just a flip of a curtain or 20 seconds or so and it will open up again as a something a completely scene. different a new yeah, scene yeah. it's absolutely incredible and just to give an idea of scale to the quality of theater that you're talking we're talking about here how many what's the tell me you know the ensemble how many how many backroom people yeah. what's the tell me the uh, the size of the, the inner workings yeah. of the theater no that's a that's a great question you know it, when in the off season and of course in the last year and a half it's been very different right because we've had to downsize right. and things mm-hmm. like that but uh you know when we're up and hopping and we have two shows running if you include everybody that's involved um we're, we're sometimes at you know between 65 and 75 people working at florida that's rest amazing. You know? yeah that's yeah. incredible oh yeah right and it's uh, i mean you're you're going up to auditions to get yeah uh, how do you you said you have six people i guess that you're from out of the state where do you find these people well the people i was talking about before those are our acting interns and we we usually bring in um anywhere between 18 and 26 interns to come and work with us in various fields of theater a lot of people don't know what i mean we are a producing organization but we're also an educational organization excuse me and uh because we bring in all of these interns in every every capacity of theater, uh, you know, lighting, uh, you know, carpentry, costume, costume. design, costume building, um, uh, mar- uh, anything in administration, um, you know, company how a company management, um, production management, stage management. There's all there's all these fields in the theater, right? Not and just the acting. Yeah. Oh gosh, just, there's so that's like yeah. such a small part of it. Sure. But in that in that circle, we bring in uh, the six actors that I was referring to and. Generally, what what we do is we go to uh, a, a conference. We go to other conferences, but the main conference that we go to to uh, uh, interview and bring on board interns in various facets of theater is called Southeastern Theater Conference. It's I think it's the largest theater conference in the country. It's pretty it's pretty and big. Where's that held? It's it moves around. It's always in the southeast sometimes, but it's usually centrally located. Like uh, you know, it could be in Knoxville or Memphis, uh, Atlanta, places in that area. So mm-hmm. you know, some mm-hmm. people's already kind of so going central. To, yeah, right. sort of a central. So people come with yeah. their scripts or their whatever. Yeah, or I guess their everything. They yeah, they'll come. audition. So they'll audition there. The interns will be. It'll be in a big giant room, you know. And it's I, I as an act former actor. I mean, I still am an actor. I just don't. I don't have the time to do it as I did <laughs> right. in the past. But you know, you go into uh, uh, what they call a cattle call audition, right? Oh, wow. and it'll be you just you kind of you know there'll be twenty of you in a line in a room. You go up onto a stage. You do your two minutes on the stage, whatever you're going to do. And usually in the audience, there's a series of I don't know, maybe fifty people. 50 companies that are there to basically to shop wow mm-hmm. t- for oh, talent yeah yeah that's mm. what it is now now for our our um we're also an ensemble based theater and you mentioned that earlier nick that's we we are committed to an ensemble of artists not just actors but also you know lighting designers costume designers scenic designers stage managers 
And we go to that pool, if you will, uh, usually before we then go branch out to look for other, and we're always looking to bring other folks into the fold. But uh, you know, with with acting, we have a series of ensemble members. We're part of our acting ensemble, but we also go to New York twice a year uh, to audition. In fact, I'm, I'm I will be going there um, in September to cast uh, most of the first half of the season oh, for roles cool. that we haven't filled yet. Right. And I'm really? sure people are jumping to come down to Fort Myers. You know, I think it's, I, you know, we do have that. I, you know, you know, a lot of actors, if they know that they're going to be able to be in, you know, in, in Southwest Florida for the winter. in February, yeah. That's, yeah. A, yeah. that's a perk, you know, yeah. they, they get that, you know, they know they could leave, you know, New York City at that time of the year and be in the, the nice warm summer. Right. On and the then, beach. You know, on the beach. Instead right. of in the snow. Uh, no. exactly. And then you have actors, housing. Actors' yeah. apartments are downtown as right. well, so yeah. it's a great place for Oh, them yeah, to, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's a, it is. I mean, it's, a, you know, I mean, I lived in New York for, for many many years too and it's like you know you come from the, from if you're a new if you're in the city and obviously it's a massive city and you have all these you know accoutrement you have everything at your fingertips when you live in in, in new york except nature right, <laughs> right. <laughs> unless Water. you go to the park yeah. yeah but but it is i i think a lot of the artists who come they really they they love this area i mean they love fort myers they love to come over here to sanibel yeah. the beaches on like sanibel yeah. you know and i always tell i mean when people come in I, you know new hires or whoever i was like well you must 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 at your very first chance get over to Sanibel I yep. said the beaches here they're stunning I mean there's like nowhere else on the planet really exactly yeah right. and is that how you ended up here through one of these yeah. cattle cattle calls well, I guess not or? not one of the cattle calls but through one of those New York auditions because I was living in New York at the time and I I auditioned for the theater company it was a much different place back the theater was much smaller Greg, can I just stop you yeah. right there just uh just so in case you didn't know a couple of episodes ago we did a a podcast and we'll you can hear the other version of this that was Liz Abbott, who was uh, uh, on the podcast and happens to be Greg's beautiful wife. Uh-huh. And this is how they met. So, sorry, carry yeah, on. No, yeah, no, that's absolutely. In fact, I could I could even go through that story. <laughs> I, I did. Yeah. I, met, I actually met Liz on this island at a party after a show and uh, she didn't give me the time of day. So I, I, <laughs> I, knew, I, knew that, I knew that the chase was on from that moment. Right. And about a year and a half later, we were we were kind of put together by a mutual friend of ours, Stephanie Davis, who I know mm-hmm. you, you've They're known still Stephanie. friends today. They're yeah. greatest of friends yeah. today, and as, I, as am I. And Stephanie's yeah. a sweetheart, great, great, great human being. We love her. And uh, yeah, she, she kind of put us together on somewhat of a blind date, you know, and uh, I was actually, incidentally, I don't want to take up too much time. No, but, no, go so ahead. I was, I, I was doing this play at the time called uh, Sleuth, okay? And that was on the on Sanibel, correct well, or not? Well, well, I was when I was on Sanibel and I met Liz at the party, that was um, that was actually, I was doing a play called Comedy of Errors, Shakespeare's Comedy of Errors. And, uh, you know, she just happened to come to the party and with Stephanie. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, I, met, I saw her there and she was coming from some fashion show. She had on all this like eye glitter and like platform <laughs> shoes. <laughs> Wow. tight white t-shirt yeah she looked like something right out of the glam rock age you know it was like it was like you know it's like t-rex had been her boyfriend or something like that you know so i i you know she looked great and i you know and i was like wow who's that and um and then we really didn't see each other and then and and you know i didn't know who she was and you know night was over all that stuff chatted with her very very briefly but then uh you know then a, a, a little later than that a year ago after that um we were sort of set up on a blind date not a blind date but a, a date and i was in a place at that time called Sleuth. And in that play, I played this character who I had on a big giant fat suit (laughs) (laughs) and huge buck teeth. (laughs) And I played this like, you know, uh, this like inspector from like, you know, North England, you know, it was like really just kind of, it was like sort of gross and stuff like that. I would just like play this character. And I remember, you know, she jokes, Liz jokes with about Stephanie where she said, wait a minute, um, that's the guy that you <laughs> that want me to go out there? with? <laughs> I'm not going out with that guy. <laughs> so, but that was, that started a, a beautiful uh, relationship. And now, you know, we're years later and yeah, two, two children. Kids, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Two kids. We got one in high school now, just started and, and uh, one in, in, um, in just started sixth grade right here on Sanibel. Which right. Which Sanibel which School. Which is very cool. Phenomenal school, by yeah. the way. Yeah. Yeah. Just a great school. A school that where my wife went, she grew up, she went to that school. That's right. I went there Marks. as well. Max and Max went there too. Max. Yes, of course, of course, yeah. great yeah. school. Yeah. So, um, so, so, so how wait? Let's how you hear about how you ended up here. So the how you got sure how did yeah. I get down? How did I got? Yeah, yeah I kind of got off track, didn't I? So I was <laughs> I was. Uh, so You're from Pennsylvania. I'm from Pennsylvania. I was living in uh, in New York City at the time and working as an actor, and you know, 
one of the things you do as an actor up there is, is um, and I, I just wanted to, I just wanted to work. I mean, I had a lot of friends who stayed in the city because they were waiting for the big job and the big commercial or the big movie part, you know, and all that stuff. And I just, you know, I went to school for theater and I, I wanted to. Where did you go to school? Well, I went to college at Westchester University outside of Philadelphia, a little ways outside of Philly. And then I went to uh, graduate school at, at the University of Pittsburgh. Okay. And that's where I got my MFA in, in performance. And I, I, you know, I, I we that, that whole program at Pitt was all about really the classics and, you know, we learned how to play Shakespeare and, you know, check off and all, you know, earlier stuff. And I, Shaw, that kind of stuff. And I, and I really, I wanted to be in plays. So I didn't care where that play was happening. That's I would tricky. travel wherever. So when people come to the city, which is what we do now, part of my job now to shop for talent, I went to as many of those auditions as I could. Well, um, that at that time I was auditioning and uh, Bob Cassiopo, I brought up, he was running at the time the Pirate Playhouse right here on, on, Santa. on, on Santa Bell. And um, he had seen me before in a play actually in Pittsburgh or outside of Pittsburgh actually. And he, he um, you know, he said, hey, I, you know, I saw you in this play and I, I brought you in, I, you've been sending me your headshot and stuff like that. And he says, I don't have anything for you right now, but I'm gonna keep you, you know, I'm gonna keep you in mind. And you know, you, you're an actor, especially a young, you, you love that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. He says, I remember you. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, the next season, he had something available and I came down and I did almost the whole season here. I did maybe four shows or something like that. And that sort of started my whole uh, love affair, I guess you could say, <laughs> right. with, coming, with to, yeah. coming to Florida. I would, I would win, you know, I'd winter, I would summer up north and do, doing different uh, plays and things like that in different areas. And, and then I, and, and I would tour around the country too and take jobs in different places. You know, if you're a regional theater actor, that's kind of what you do. You, mm-hmm. you base yourself in New York. The producers come to New York to shop and audition, and then you, if you get a gig, and you hope you do, you then travel to wherever the shows are right. taking place. I mean, it was wow. a, it was a great way for me to see. You know, I was a young single guy back then. I mean, I loved you know getting to see the country and, right. and being out and about. It was uh, it was really a, a great great job. Right. So, but, how but, long before you moved down full time? So you were you were acting as this yeah. overweight, goofy northern <laughs> Englishman <laughs> uh, with the buck teeth, right. and, and that obviously uh, Liz bought into that. So she did, she yeah. did. So that. that that was, I think, the first season of Florida Rep, actually. I think it was 1998, I believe. And um, I, I, you know, we started courting at that time and we dated and, and uh, but I would, you know, I was still working. So I would leave and go out to other, do other gigs in other cities and stuff like that and go back to New York and come back to Florida. I mean, I was here quite a bit. Bob would bring me down. Um, you know, as I said, we were, I was part of the or the original ensemble, I guess you would say, when we, when the theater opened. So I came down quite a bit in the winter and, and Liz, you know, often would follow me up north too, or follow me where I was playing. I mean, I was in Charlotte one time doing a play and she came and visited and it was really, those were great days. I was in West Palm beach for a while doing, you know, and it was yeah, some, some of it was, so cool. oh, it was great. It was great. But I, I, you asked, when did I finally come down? I mean, I, I, I think I gave up my <laughs> my New York City apartment. <laughs> Did you About have one of to, those little tiny apartments? Oh, I've had them all. <laughs> yeah, Lori, I've had them. Cockroaches. You, oh, and... you name it. I've had more than cockroaches <laughs> jump on me. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I've had, I could go into detail about things, but it would be like a horror movie type thing. Right. But, oh, yeah, yeah. New York City is full of all that stuff. All those all those stories, they're true. It's true. Oh. Yeah, no, I, I, um, I, I, you know, I had that, I had a place and I lived all over. I mean, I, for a while, I lived in the East Village. I lived in, in Hell's Kitchen. I lived in morning side like near columbia university um i've lived in other neighborhoods where did i anyway so i i but i at this time i had i had a place all the way up on like 158th and riverside and i moved into that with my my roommate i had a roommate and um i was never in it you know i was always traveling and i had subletted that but you know no one ever wants to give up their new york city apartment you you might not get it back yeah you don't want you know like you get something you hold on to it (laughs) so i i think that you know and liz could probably tell you better because she would she would constantly say you know greg when are you gonna you're gonna you know give up up that part you know and and, and i think it was probably a good like eight years that i held on to oh Oh, yeah yeah oh it was too long it was too long and then i finally said no i'm gonna get off the next lease and all that stuff and that yeah, was a good decision now yeah. now we go and we go to new york city and and visit and see plays and i have so many friends in the city too which i of we're very close to both both liz and i we both lived in new york at different times gotcha. uh, yeah. yeah and funny yeah. thing is we both know a lot of the same people from having from just yeah just oh, because wow. everybody thinks it's not a big you know it's such a small world right. you know i'm yeah. sure in that. that's cool so the then community. let's fast forward yeah. to uh today what what have you got <laughs> 
coming up for the coming season so this is exciting times because Absolutely. we're finally going to get we're back an audience yes. and uh, yes. Nick will be down there we, we've all been yep. put on hold me included so yeah. normally be I'll be there, going to each pictures. show taking oh, pictures yeah. and so, listen I, I'm, and I, I'm just going to give you a quick plug Nick because your work is phenomenal I mean the pictures that you have taken there the beauty of those shots I don't know I don't know how you do what you do but it, it, it's really it, they really are some of the most I mean not just the best pictures that I've ever seen of the productions at Florida Rep, which they are hands down. But when you compare those those production shots to any production shots and done anywhere in the country, Broadway or wherever, you're 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 uh, you're super talented. Oh, that's, oh, that's very kind yeah, of no, you. Are. Much, you are much appreciated. And he definitely yeah. he loves doing it too. Yeah, yeah I enjoy you, it. Yeah. I, I went. I I uh, I'd like to take some credit. I went to a few of those in high school, and I think I think I gave him some pointers. <laughs> <laughs> he would sit. Uh, they would always reserve <laughs> reserve three seats, and uh, so I'd have to st- sit one of my bags on top of Max's lap. <laughs> yeah, I'd sit, right. I'd sit in the crowd and sometimes. Yeah, yeah. our uh, kids go with him sometimes just because yeah. you do yeah. save a bunch of seats in the back for him. Yeah. So our kids will go, uh, or I'll go along it. with them. Uh, oh, always. Get to Max, enjoy the shows. There will always be a seat for Max. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, you, right? Thank you. Always, buddy. You got it. You All got right. It. So get us into it. Yeah. What we got coming so, up for so, the show? Okay. So I'll, I'll give you the rundown. So we, first off, we're, we're so psyched. I mean, it's been so it's been so long, you know, that we've been able to get into our spaces. But we are, we're going to open the season with a, a, a brand new world premiere cabaret that we are developing. Florida Rep is developing. Jason Parrish, our associate artistic mm-hmm. director, is also working with... Um, uh, Vicky Casella, who is often uh, an accompanist and works and in, in, is a musical director for us very often. They're building a piece right now called Let's Fall in Love. And it's oh, it's going to be a wonderful night. It's music of Nat King Cole and Frank Sinatra, Tony Bennett, Bing Crosby, awesome. no way. all these great standards from like the you know the four, 30s, 40s, and 50s. And uh, we have a three piece band. It's 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 going to be really terrific. That's going to open up in our small space. In okay. What we call the, uh, so space. explain. I don't think we actually talked about that. We have the main the main theater. But yeah. You, okay. Yeah. So so, I don't think we actually so yeah, explain the two theaters. You know first, what? I'm glad we that, that's good, Lloyd, because I that will be that'll make yeah. Then when we make more explaining, it yeah. will be easy. Yeah, be people that can can visualize it. So we do we do have two spaces right now, two performance spaces. The original space that we talked about, the arcade historic arcade theater, that seats 393, and that's like a traditional what we call a proscenium stage, right? With the uh, picture frame stage, everybody's on one side of the audience, and then you. And then you have a basic, and those big cool frame. velvet seats, and those cool red velvet <laughs> seats. So that that's the arcade, and then then our our second space um, that we opened. I want to say two thousand nine, maybe that that opened that space. Um, it's art stage, and it's it's very convenient because a, a big chunk of the money to develop that stage was given by um, a, one of our benefactors, Art Zupco. So how appropriate that is called art stage yeah. right? <laughs> okay. clever, right? I did not know that yeah so Very so cool. and that's basically uh, that's a converted um, um, a found what we would call in the theater a found space it's a black box theater and that's completely com- convertible well you know we could be in the round we can have seating on all four sides we can have alley seating so just on both sides uh, thrust seating there's a lot What's of thrust seating. Uh, thrust seating is is where you have audiences on three sides, so a oh, section so of the, the stage thrusts yeah. into the crowd. Exactly, Max. That, th- that stage so thrusts into the crowd. <laughs> yep, yep. That's exactly okay. right. And that's we're going to be set up in a. Normally, we change things around, but this season, we're for the sake of for simplicity and for um, really for also because of of the workload on the technical staff because we're a little bit downsized. It's not going to have any, it's not going to have any bearing on the quality right. of the work that we do. Right. But we're going to keep it in that thrust seating for this season. Season. Next season, we'll take another look at it. But we're going to open in that space, in the Art Stage Studio space with uh, Let's Fall in Love. So How many does that hold? How many? That's, depending you know, on how depend- you seat it. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's right. That's right, Nick. So it depends on the, on the um, you know, how you have the seating in there. But we can be anywhere usually from like 95 to 116, basically. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, more it's more intimate. It's much intimate. more intimate. Yeah. I mean, I love working in there. I like, I mean, I, I, I'm in all capacities, but it's really fun to act in there because it's almost like film-esque. You know, yeah. you're so close to the audience. You can you be you, you really you hear them breathing oh you hear them <laughs> breathing. Oh, oh yeah yeah, yeah. They're, right on, they're right in your lap you know oh, yeah. i guess we technically we're right in their lap too that's you know true. but it's yeah. it's uh oh it's a fun space so that's the that's the first one that's okay. the, that's the first one the second one we're going to open in in the large space the uh, arcade 
is a it's a it's a great ghost story. It's called The Woman in Black, and I won't tell you too much about it. But it's a, it's a you know it's a classic British uh, ghost story. It takes place like on the moors, you know, kind mm-hmm. of thing. And uh, see fog. Yeah, you'll probably see some fog. <laughs> yeah. You'll probably see some of that. Sounds like some sketchy lighting for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it might be a little yeah. tougher. Yeah, that's right. You. That's right. But that's a it's a great great old uh, two. It's a two basically a two hander. Um, but we're really excited about that. Um, it's a play I did myself years ago. I, I acted in it. Excuse me, but it's uh, in a fat a, suit. Not in a fat suit. suit. No, but okay. I wore all kinds of hats and things like that. You know, it's one of those things where you like you grab a cane, you know, or you have a chest, and now you're on a you're sitting on a horse. You know, right. a, you use that all these fun thing. props to cool. to kind of create the world of the play and. I think our audiences are really going to enjoy that. So that's what's going to open up the season in the in the large space. So our third production is actually something we've never done before. We're really excited about it. It's a co-pro or co-production with our conservatory program, which is extremely vibrant. We've got some of the most talented kids that come into our conservatory. I mean, so is that it, what that means? So explain conservatory. Yeah, so, so that's the, so it's the been, we, it's children's? Some, yep. It's, it's, so we have we, uh, part of the education program. We do several different things. Uh, we have TYA, what's called Theater for Young Audience Tours. That's where we primarily engage those six acting interns that come in. That's their main, really their main job is to be out into the community, uh, taking these productions to, to the children out in the community. And it, and we have we do three different shows. We do a, a show for the younger kids, the elementary school age. Then we do a middle-aged school appropriate show. And over the last mm, three years, we've been doing a Shakespeare production mm. for the high school kids right. which we're really excited and this one is uh, the scottish play this year we're gonna be doing the scottish play so that's a big part of education then we have classes all throughout the year for the kids so they can take different classes in different facets of theater then we have um we have the conservatory program the conservatory program is uh is an audition only program and you you have to audition to get into it to get onto the team so to speak, and um, and it's a little bit more, you know, we're dealing with a little bit more um, headier type pieces, stuff mm-hmm. that the teenagers are going to identify with and want to be a part of, and we do three of those a year. I also failed to mention that in the summer we have a really vibrant um, camp program right. we call Camp Florida Rep, and we we have um, the Mini Stars program, which is for the little ones, and then we have um, I think it goes up to sixteen, I think, or seventeen in the summer. I forget what the age appropriate the the, the um, cutoff is, but we'll do four. Uh, productions in that but the conservatory pr- program which is what we're partnering with um for the third play of the season we're going to be doing uh west side story oh very cool classic. always yeah, a classic yeah, classic yeah, yeah. great piece right I, I mean it's just i love that Who piece. Love one, of my, it, yeah. one of my favorites actually and um yeah yeah oh here we go oh, laurie's out. off laurie's <laughs> off <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Got uh, to stay cool, boy. Uh, Real yeah. cool. <laughs> exactly. Uh, no, so we're psyched to do that. I mean, it's 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 going to be so. It's and it's going to be a great pro- project for the kids because they, you know, they're going to be working side by side with union actors wow. from mm-hmm. our ensemble. So the, uh, for them to have that experience and and for um, you know audiences to see. For the first time, really, our, our main stage audience is to see the local talent that we have here getting up on that stage to put this production on. I think we're going to blow minds with it. I think yeah, that's are, awesome. Yeah. Very cool. So that's the third. That's yeah. the third okay. West Side Story. And we're doing pretty much a, you know more musicals than we've ever done uh, this this season. Then um, around that same time that, that that is running, that West Side Story is up and is running, we start rehearsals for Driving Miss Daisy which okay. is a Pulitzer Prize winner right. um, that's, you know, famous film of that. And, yep. and uh, it's, it's, it's a really great piece. I think we're, you know, it's, it's a, I mean, it goes without saying, I think a lot of people are familiar with the title. It's, it has sold the very movie. well and the movie. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So that's, that'll be the Isn't fourth Morgan piece. Freeman? Morgan Freeman. Yes. Yeah. Morgan Freeman. I think he was in, I think he opened it on Broadway too. Oh, oh really? I yeah. I yeah. I think Morgan Freeman was, was in, in the original cast on Broadway. If, I, if Is there just served. two actors in it or is there more than? It's, it's a three hander. Okay. Yeah. Three yeah. People. Mm-hmm. Yep, it's it's um yeah it's, oh, it's the chauffeur. Yep, the chauffeur <laughs> and then Daisy herself, and then her her son is oh, in, is in the story okay, as I don't well. Remember that. But it's a great it's it's uh you know it's just one of those pieces where I think that on the surface it might look like oh it's just this kind of nice, but it's not. It's it's really an in depth piece. I think it's a it's a great story really about friendship. Quite frankly, that's what that's that's what that's how it touches me. But uh, that'll be our third. That's going to be in the small the space. That's going to be in the small space. Yep, exactly in the art stage uh, studio space. And then 
Uh, after that, we opened a, a new play, fairly new play called Morning After Grace. And that takes place inside of a, a, a Florida retirement village. So I think it's, you know, it, people Very will appropriate. see. appropriate. Yeah. So too, yeah. <laughs> and I, I don't want to give away too much of that, but because um, the opening scene uh, is you, you basically, you, you're entreated to a, a, a man and a woman um, half naked on the couch. Uh, Excellent. Okay. <laughs> under is a the, what is it, the villages? Yeah, 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 so it's a little racy, right? It goes a little racy and then things kind of take off from there. But it's very, it's very much a, a heartfelt, uh, you know, comedy. Uh, it's it's a definitely a comedy, and uh, um, but there's a lot of great. You know, there's some pathos in there too. There's a lot of really really um, heartfelt uh, things that happen throughout the evening. That's morning after grace. Then um, we uh, open again in the big space. This that's going to be in the art stage. Then we open again in the art stage after that with a, a newer piece. Uh, you could call it a farce, but and it is. It's set up in, the, in a farce sort of a structure, but it's a great play called Into the Breaches. And it's the story of these uh, women during World War II. Uh, their, their respective husbands, spouses are overseas. And uh, it takes place inside of a, of a professional theater company that would normally put on um, you know, a full season. And uh, one of the uh, pieces that they want to put on is is uh is the henry ad or the henry you know they're doing henry four henry five uh shakespeare's plays and um they they decide that they want to you know go forward and go go through with it but it's basically what it is it's you have you have women playing men, men playing women sometimes in the show that aren't a lot, aren't a lot of it. Okay. so women but it's, playing drag drag queens yeah kind of yeah, yeah. you have a, you have yeah. a little you have a little bit of that going on but it's a it's a fantastic piece and i, I love it because I, I find it to be uh i'm kind of a patriotic kind of a guy and it's it's a it's a it's a very patriotic piece it's a re, it pays a real homage to um to the country and you know i mean with all the things that we can point fingers at about what we do wrong this is a great piece also that kind of illuminates some of the things that's really good about us awesome yeah, absolutely yeah. awesome yeah. and it's awesome. all women in the play uh, it's there? not it's not it's mostly women mostly women yeah okay. it's not all women there's a couple of male roles in there right. too and there's great you know there's great conflict you in should there. be asking how they identify <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There that you go. Be an well, I don't know. You know, who knows? We'll have to wait for the first rehearsal yeah, right, to go. see how it goes. But that's gonna that's gonna be uh, that'll be in the big stage too. Okay. And then um, the play that I was talking about earlier that we had to shut down. Oh, okay. Was um, originally uh, produced in the in the arcade stage, and it was called A Doll's House Part Two. And A Doll's House, many, some you know theater folk are, are, are familiar, familiar with, is Henrik Ibsen's classic A Doll's House, and it was a a really controversial play in its time when it was released in late 1800s because it involved uh, a, um, the mother of the family leaving the family, leaving the kids, leaving the husband and walking out, right? Oh, okay. And that was just something like back in those days that was like, oh Unheard of. God, yeah, right, to do that. I mean, what, what a scandal. Well, this is called Doll's House Part Two, and it basically what it does is it picks up 15 years after Nora, the lead character, leaves and she comes back to the house. Oh. So, so it's, it, you know, so that's, yeah, it is, it really sets the scene. We were ready to open that play when the whole COVID thing happened and these actors and the director and everybody on the, on the team so worked so, oh, they worked so hard and they did such a beautiful job. We thought, hey, let's reimagine it in the small space. Oh, so cool. anybody who saw it on film or saw the last, you know, dress rehearsal for it, this is going to be a whole different experience because it's going to be in that almost like film esque type, you know what I mean, where you're so right on top of it, of the of the performers. That'll be uh, that'll be next in the art stage. Uh, then we um, then we uh, uh, pivot to another musical, which we're excited about, um, Buddy, the Buddy Holly. Story. Oh yeah, uh -huh. so wait, Laurie and I went to one in uh, in London. In London, did you really? Yeah, we did. Did you so saw Buddy, Buddy, Holly? Buddy in London. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You enjoyed yeah. it? It's yeah, it's great. Good. Yeah. yeah, it's great. I mean, the music's great, and I think our art. You know, two years ago we did a play called Million Dollar Quartet, which mm. was like, mm. did amazing. you see that? Oh, Wasn't it terrific? Gosh, so good. I know, and the sound in that yeah. space is great, isn't yeah, it? That's, it is amazing. It's an amazing yeah. venue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that's that's Buddy Holly. And then um, let's see here. Then after that, we go into um, a romance at the end of the story called Maytag Virgin, and it's a. I won't tell you too much about it either, but it's a. It's a. You know, it's it's a it's a it's a romance um, love story, I guess you could say. 
a uh, little offbeat, a little quirky, but it um, it involves these two um, two younger people. Well, they're, you know, they're they're I don't want to say they're in their twenties or in their thirties and forties who recently lost both of them lost their spouse very recently, and um, it really it really delves into um, you know what it is to lose someone, and you know I, I think that you know our our audiences skew a little older at the at the rep, and um, I, I don't think there's anyone in the room that will have not been affected in some way. Uh, like that. So I think it's a, it's a nice poignant, you know, piece that, uh, I think our audiences will identify with. Wow. Very so cool. that wraps up the season. Yeah. That, that wraps, wraps up, up the, the season. season. So the saying season. that, how do people get tickets? Cause I'm sure everybody wants to go oh, now. Sure. Absolutely. Well, there's, there's several ways, but the, the easiest way is to call the box office, uh, 239-332-4488. That's 239-332-4488. Or you can go to floridarep.org and anybody. Uh, floridarep.org. Yeah. Florida Got it. Rep.org. And you sell single tickets and packages? Yeah. Yeah. We sell single tickets, subscriptions. We sell some great. It's great to subscribe. I mean, you can get a lot of, you can get a good discount if you subscribe and there's all kinds of perks when you subscribe to the theater. Uh, ten, you get, you get uh, for all those restaurants in downtown, you can get a discount card and get discounts on your meals in downtown. Um, yeah, it, there, there's a lot, there's a lot of perks. Any times you have to exchange it, there's no problem to exchange a ticket and any of that if you're a subscriber, but, uh, yeah, we're, we're excited. I mean, it's, it's a, you know, it's, it's a, you know, we're look, it's a little tenuous right now because of everything that's gone on. So right. we're kind of thinking, you know, we yeah. got our fingers yeah. crossed, you know, yeah. but we're, we're heading forward, you know, full steam ahead. Good. Awesome. So I can't recommend it enough. Make sure if you're coming to the islands, allow at least one night to go to the theater. Yeah. Uh, it's probably about uh, 35 to what do you think? 50 minute drive, yeah, maybe, yeah, in season depending probably. on traffic. Yeah. But yeah, it's worth um, going. Worth definitely it. worth going for a night out. Uh, you, you know, there's the, the whole downtown scene, get some dinner, go to the theater. Tons of places to and eat. And you can even come out of the theater now and it's still open. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, still, still going on. Way, so. right, right, yeah. Yeah. So, a bunch of cool rooftop bars, which yeah, are really, yeah, really yeah. fun to so go to. We'll have all the information in the, in the links below. We'll have the, uh, the link to the website uh the ticket office and all the rest of it so make sure you check it out and make sure you pay them a visit it's a really professional outfit it's absolutely amazing every time i go and see a production there there's something in there just one little thing it could be many things but there's a little thing that always surprises me thinks, oh, i haven't seen that before or you know it's incredible to see the the level of professionalism for a local theater like like the florida rep so absolutely Thanks. thank you for that nick so, um, Max, we, uh, going back to uh, Sanibel. Uh, yeah. Our Sanibel roots. <laughs> yeah. So, well, this is a question we always ask everyone. If you had to give a recommendation to someone visiting the islands, what is the one thing you would say to do on Sanibel and Captiva? Your favorite thing to do out here, basically. Yeah. What do you tell all those act interns? I tell them, I said, you, you must, you must go to the beach if you're coming over here. I mean, I know that's probably trite, you know, but no, that's all right. So it can be true. You know, yeah. that's okay. It, it, it really, I mean, it, it, the beach is here and I knew it from the first time I came here. I, was, I mean, it, they, they really are magical. The sand mm -hmm. is like, like baby powder. I mean, it's, it's such a, it, it's such a unique experience. I mean, I grew up kind of, you know, when I finally got old enough, we went, I would go to the, to the beach in Jer in New Jersey, in South Jersey, which is, mm. I loved it, you know, but mm. It's a very different experience here. The granulation of the sand, the the sounds, the birds, the wildlife here. That's such a, I mean, that is, that's something that you cannot, you know, you, you can't really create that. That kind of comes from God, right? I mean, yeah, you, yeah. You, you have all that here and that the wildlife here, um, I would say, I would tell anybody, you, you absolutely need to come on to Sanibel because uh, it's, it's so, it's so magical. And when you come here, go to the beach. That's fair agree. enough. That almost seems like a segue to the film that will probably be released by the time this podcast is. Uh, Max, maybe or not? Yes or yes. no? Very right coming around soon. this time. Coming this soon. Coming soon. Really? There is look out for a video. We won't spoil it, but it's going to be coming out anytime soon. So, All about yeah. the beaches. All about oh, beaches. Laurie, you had Sorry. to say. You gave it well, We got to tell them what we're talking about. Okay, exactly. that's true, I guess. I guess. <laughs> yeah. I think, <laughs> yeah. The top beaches of Sanibel and Captiva. Yeah. What yeah. is your favorite beach? Um, I have a I have a, an affinity for the beach right out right near Umbrella Pool Road, and and that's in the that? that's that's, oh, that's oh, in is the that Algiers or the by the bayous or Bowman's Beach. Go, 
Um, is that Bowman's up there? It's way. Oh. It's, so as you go north, just before you get onto Captiva, oh, gotcha. You, if you make a left into the Sanibel Bayous, right, right, and then and you kind of careen back S- into that Silver area. Key Beach. No, I think he's talking about Bowman's Beach. You pass like the fire department on on the San Cap no, Road. The, the Bayous is that development past that. Oh. It's right across from one of the entrances into another great feature down here. The um, oh, the end of uh, of um, uh, the Ding Darling. Concert, yeah, the end of Ding Darling. I oh, think that's the oh, I know. It. Yeah, I don't. That part. Yeah, what did what did you call that beach? You might be totally right, but I didn't know I, they had a name. I don't know. I don't know what the. I don't know what the. Oh, maybe I'm saying wrong with Umbrella Pool. That might have been another house when I first came to Florida. Um, and I, I worked at the Pirate Playhouse here on the island. We were housed out there. Oh, and, and it was and it was like the most magical thing. I would get up in the morning and I would I would come out of my we were in a big beautiful A framed house and I would come out and you had like a three minute walk through what was like almost like the canopied beautifulness, but a path that led right down to the water. And to me, that that part that beach there. Always I think has that's a, I think that's Bowman's Beach. I just looked it's up the, umbrella that's pool. That's that's the part I, towards it. Yeah, and yeah. I can yeah. see the trail that yeah. goes. I just pulled it up on oh, maps and it's. Okay. See the trail that goes right out there. Yeah. Right. So 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 pretty because you can, mm-hmm. you know it was one of those things where you you walk in through this canopied area. You can't see the Gulf from there. You know you're mm-hmm. kind of walking right. through trees and it winds. So you know that's what's in front of you is more more trees and things like that. And then finally you come to the end and it just opens up like it's a you know like it's paradise. You walk into and I mm-hmm. that was my first year here and I I just it took my breath away. I mean I, I loved it and in fact I would be out in the water in you know february and people would be looking at me like what's this, this kid crazy doing? person <laughs> what's he yeah. doing out here i'm from pennsylvania so, well, yeah, i was like no i can take it i mean in fact that's how i would wake up in the morning too i you uh, know, go for a swim yeah, yeah i'd go out there you, and what a great idea right yeah. up. Oh, oh, that's which awesome. we actually didn't mention but there is no theater anymore on the island you were here during the, for the pirate playhouse but you can actually see the actual building yeah. that the pirate playhouse was in at the Sanibel historical right, village right right so that's right. it was yeah. the original school on the island. Yeah, yeah. Now yeah. that building, that building there, Lori, that was the old schoolhouse theater, which then was, I guess, the Pirate Playhouse. The theater that I played in. Is, oh, you is were the across Jay, the street. I was across the street, okay. but Liz, my wife, played that in that all pirate? in that. Yeah, the Pirate Playhouse all the time. She lo- Oh, she loved it. I think it sat about a hundred, maybe, in there. Yeah. And I'd right. seen plays in there. I'd seen wow. some things right. in there, but yeah, that's part of the magic of the of the island so many you know so many great, great things, things that have happened yeah, yeah what was the other one the, not the old schoolhouse theater it's kind of confusing because the pirate playhouse was originally the old schoolhouse and then the pirate playhouse moved over the road to a new building and was called the pirate playhouse but and then, then switched became- names to, to the, the J. Howard, Howard Wood. Wood, and then it switched names again to yeah Herb Strauss. Yeah, Herb, Herb Strauss. Strauss. That's right. Yeah, so Herb, so. Herb, not to go on that tangent, but Herb was a great friend of my my in laws, and also a great friend uh, to me. Herb and Evelyn Strauss, um, dear dear, we lost Herb uh, several years ago now, but one of the greatest guys on the planet. This is a guy who who um, he knew everybody. I mean, he just he he was such a, a, a magnanimous person and he had he'd worked uh, i think at his when he was at the height of his career i think he was like the senior vice president of viacom or something like that mm, he had a big big geez. job in the city he developed like to tell the truth these shows that were big in the 70s when i was a kid and um just a super super great guy and a, and a huge huge theater lover right Very yeah cool. and so, so that theater doesn't run anymore it's still there. Yeah. It's still there, and it's what do they do? By, it's, um, but they're owned by Big it's Arts. Owned by Big but, Arts now. What do they do? Yeah. Just education in there now? I'm not sure open? what they do. I'm not sure. I know Big Arts just built a, a brand new space, and I think see the difference between uh, and I, I don't think I'm, I'm I think I'm speaking correctly. Big Arts is is what you would call a presenting organization, right? So they they bring people in, mm-hmm. and they, you know, and I, and the work I've seen some stuff is fantastic, you know. They but they bring work in, right. whereas Florida Rep. We build everything by hand. We we produce. We're a produ- mm-hmm. we're a producing organization. Oh, we're I see what you're saying. You know, it's not dissimilar from like uh, Barbara B. Mann, right? Where they have the big musicals in that big hall. They're a presenting organization, so they bring mm-hmm. in road shows, they bring in tours and things like that. Where well, they have a uh, yeah. they're providing Bert, the space, basically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I yeah. think me and Dad are going to see Bert Kreischer there. Uh, uh, I think the we comedian. missed it. 
Did we? I think so. Unfortunately, oh, I'm sure. Never mind. We're not going there. Bert Kreischer <laughs> is. So. Oh, there's got to be someone out there. He's a comedian. All right, Max. So have you got some? Uh, give us. So some now this is our trivia. Time. Time. I don't know if you know. Oh, no, trivia time. I, I think I, I think I did see this on the <laughs> on, on another show. So uh, yeah, uh, all right. I love so, trivia. There we go, Max. What have you got? Well, for Mom, us? do you have your scoreboard over there? I, uh, I can't see it. Do we use this, Max? To write, do we write on yeah, this, write Max? Yeah, you'll write Hold the on. answer down. Hold on, let me get that for you. <laughs> so we, Mom bought this on Amazon because she is so braggadocious about her uh, her Should record we, on the show. So. And what is it? Uh, unofficially, it is 10 wins. Oh my for mom. Oh, oh my it's opposite. I need to switch that. Uh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> okay. no, no one cares. And then uh, two, two ten, wins for ten dad. to me and two to Laurie. Okay. I have it mixed up. Yeah. Yeah, okay. No All one right. cares, to be honest, mom. Yeah, Put that okay. away. Yeah, there All you right. go. <laughs> it's because right. I've won the last two. It's really hurt her feelings. Oh, oh so we'll see what happens today, shall we? <laughs> All right. There we go. All right. Bring it on. We have three questions today. Okay. First one. First one's a little, a little easy, I think. So don't get it wrong. No pressure. Oh, no pressure. Pressure's on. So it's a geographical question. Yeah. Ooh. This drive off of Lingren Boulevard, which for the people that don't know, is the first drive as you come on the island over you the bridge. Straight through the four-way stop. That's Lingren. That's Lingren Boulevard. Is named after this aquatic currency. What? Can, can you repeat the question? <laughs> this drive on a friend off of Lingren Boulevard is named after this aquatic currency. Oh, okay. Aquatic. Got it. Aquatic <laughs> currency. This drive. So this is a road. Yeah. Oh, it's actually a drive. Yeah. It's, a, it's drive. a drive. It's a drive that when you get onto Lingren, it's the it's on your left. It's on the left, and and it's what it's named after eight. an aquatic currency. It's so easy. I know. <laughs> what? It All right, do we have time? I think we got a we got a oh, we need a timer. Oh, wait, hold on. We've got we, we've got we hey, sh mom, we got 30 seconds. It's going no. okay, it's going mine. into I got mine. It's got, I know where okay, it is. 10, I know where it goes. You, it doesn't matter where it is. The the answer's in the question. <laughs> I think I have. Oh, it. um, it's, very, uh, it's cheeky. I have no five, idea. Five, <laughs> four, on. dad with the with three. the forfeit. Mom, you're not the timer. Oh, I'm the timer. Yeah, yeah, just just for I need you to calm down. Point. Max, talk to me. I need you to calm down. Time's yeah. up. <laughs> oh, now you didn't give me a chance. It was on the tip of my tongue. Okay, honestly. what you got, the, Greg? Uh, is it sand dollar? Yes. Oh, oh, my God. Oh, oh, I had sand dollar written up and down here on the back. I just didn't think it would. I thought nobody would ask such a simple question. Uh, I, oh, I can't believe dear. you. I put that one in there so everyone would get a point. Oh, oh, I really I did. I out on a first. point. I, okay. I started to sweat. All right. <laughs> All right. Sandal. Is that going no, into so the That dunes? was the easy one. Oh, no. So I know. Oh, no. What's yeah. coming We're down scared. the pipe? No, it is. It's, uh, it's, it's, half, it's just past. It's like Maybe halfway no, down Lingren on your left no, if you're coming from the closet. You don't want to know. Go on. All right. I don't know if anyone will know this one. Okay. <laughs> this one's in Captiva at the Bubble Room. Okay. The ice cream parlor at the Bubble Room, which I believe is newly opened. Correct. Is hosted by what fictional character? Oh, no. By what fictional character? Oh, no. Character? Oh, no, it's, no. It's hosted no, by no. a very famous fictional character. Um, or named after. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Okay. He or she stands in there, looks over the, the line. Is it a uh, uh, fictional? It's a fictional character. Wow, that's, from, I mean, that's pretty older, broad. Is it an, old, is it an character. older character? Are we allowed to ask? It is, <laughs> yeah. it, it is a, it's an older fictional character. It's been around for, for as long as I can remember. Hmm. He or she? He or she. Oh. <laughs> is, this, is this fictional character you know Bugs Bunny? Ita Italian? <laughs> Italian? No, I they, did not. They could be. Funny. I'm not sure. Okay. <laughs> All right, we need time. Yeah, All right, yeah, we do need time. Uh, All right. Okay. Final answers. Has everyone got an answer? No. No. <laughs> yeah. All right. Oh, okay. That's All right. Very broad right. Question. I don't think it's right, though. Well, it's not if you've been there, but I guess okay. nobody's been there. I haven't. No. I mean, I've yeah, been I'll to the bubble room. Every oh, day, I would, in the bubble room, I love the bubble yeah, room. I would yeah. have never. I just haven't been there in a while. I only went in there because we walked in there, and I, yeah. this is why I wrote this question. I wrote it in my phone. Um, Mom, do you want to tell us the answer? Betty Boop. 
That's correct. Oh, oh, man. Man. What did you Betty have, Vic? Yeah. Mad Hatter. You had Bugs Bunny. No, I said ears, <laughs> Bunny. I, I didn't. I, I wasn't. I, I had Pinocchio. Well, Pinocchio. That, uh, that, that, that there is a Pinocchio's ice cream. There on? used to be. There used to be. Yeah. 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 I knew the, people, the people that started that that Pinocchio. Oh, really? Gotcha. Yeah. And actually, yeah. they just opened off the island. I don't know if you knew that by Five Guys. No kidding. Yes. Yeah. They opened it at Pinocchio's. Mm-hmm. No way. Yes. Yeah. L- cool. Last week. All right. All right. Final I'm question. So that, now. The, the new Mom? ice cream parlor is called Boops. Boops. It is just called Boops. Boops. Okay. And instead of going into the main bubble room restaurant, you can actually go to Boops and they sell slices of cake and Ooh. ice cream. Their famous cake, which Their is so cake. dang good. Oh yeah. my gosh. The red velvet. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, is that God. your favorite? Oh yeah. That's okay. my favorite one. Yeah. I like the orange one. Orange crunch. Oh, orange crunch, crunch is orange good. Crunch. Yeah. Oof, the crunch. All, All right. right. Come on. Hit me up, Max. One, two, zero. Go on. <laughs> Oh, really? Absolutely you brutal. Absolutely brutal. brutal. Look at the, I've never seen a look She's so evil. Happy. She's <laughs> evil. She's absolutely loving this. Absolutely oh loving this. I, I Throw right. me a bone. Ask me a rugby question. Quick, Max. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Our final question. The first drive on your left as you come off the causeway onto Sanibel is named after a doubly reflecting navigation instrument that measures the <laughs> angular distance between two visible objects. Are you seeing for real? Say that again. A doubly reflecting navigation instrument that measures the angular distance between two visible objects, often used in uh, sh- ships traveling. So the, where is this road? It's the first one on your left. The first road on your left as you come on the island. Yep, there's even a sign that depicts this instrument. It's used the- in ships traveling, right? Hmm. Oh, I can't think of the name of it. I can and see it. And you passed it five thousand times. I know. I know. Every double day. reflecting. A double? doubly reflecting navigation instruments used in in mar- marine navigation. Uh, yeah, I don't know what it is, but I can't think of the name. No, you. I th- you would have it, Dad. I, don't I wrote know this exactly for you. What it is. You yeah. got? Did I stump you all? I can see what it looks like. Mm. <laughs> all right. I know the name of the. You guys are going to be mortified when I tell uh, you. Don't tell us. Don't tell us. Give us more it's time. So tennis. Gotta... Te- it goes into tennis place, doesn't it? Is yep. it? Yeah. I wrote something down, so I don't know if I'm right. Um, it is a. It's that. That's a weird. I wrote it. I took the definition from from Wikipedia, obviously, because right. I didn't write that. <laughs> right. Right. It M- is cool. maritime navigation. Yeah, I can see it. Okay. All right. I can't, I can't remember the technical name. Are you yet. serious? Yeah, right. I'm serious. All right. Should we say what we put? Yeah. Mom, go ahead. I put compass point. Nope. Dad. I put a uh, sighting boy or a marking boy, marker boy. Great. Did you get anything? anything? I do. It's not the right. It's. I think it's the land version of it. Maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think it's what it is. I, say, I said transit. Sextant. 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 I knew Sextant. it. Oh, I knew it. I had an S on there as well, Max. I knew it. I had S. I knew it. Uh, Dad, do you want a, do you want a sixth of a point? Yes, please. That? Yeah. Okay. I, mean, I had an S in one Good of my S. answers. So All right, it's called Dad. Sextant. Sextant. Yeah. It's yeah. that thing. It's that device that has the, the compass yeah, on it. Uh, exactly. Glass and you, that isn't what I was talking about. I thought it was where you, there's some markers that you can line up two posts and then in the distance you can line it so, a sight marker. That's what I thought it was. Snooze fest. Doesn't make it. Doesn't make it. Snooze fest. That's a transit, I think. Is that what transit does? Mom, I'm looking at Google Maps right now. It's called Sextant Drive. All right. There is literally, if you look left as you come over the bridge, there is a sign that has a sextant on it. In case you don't know what one is, when you're coming to the island, look to your left. Think about this episode of the podcast and say, Max talked about that thing right there. It's a double okay. refracting. I'm never, never going to forget, the, it. Well, never forget it. What's the course, definition again? How could you again? forget it? A, a, double a doubly re- reflecting navigation instrument that measures the angular distance between two visible objects. So yeah. it measures the go. distance between stars, stars and then you place yourself on a map. Man. I can't wow. believe you didn't get that one. Yeah. I'm, I'm shocked that So tell us what... What were the final scores? No, we don't need to go through this. this Dad has one sixth of a point. Greg has a one. (laughs) And mom has two. Oh, boy. Again, victorious. Victorious again. Don't get the the scoreboard out. out. Let's get the scoreboard out. Oh, you're kidding me? Oh, are you serious? Oh, Lori. Talk about rubbing it in. Yeah, she can't help it. Oh, I'm Lauren. Excellent. Put it up here, Lauren. You went the wrong way. I'm 11. There we go. Put it there. 
that for me, Laurie. Oh, okay. Put it away, Mom. Well, thanks very much for this episode <laughs> of the Sand Cat Guide. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, I want to take Just this like opportunity. That. Thank you very much for coming in, Greg. Thank you, Greg. Uh, you much appreciate you, Greg. Everybody... If- Make Hit sure you check rep. out the oh, Florida Rep. All the info is in the links below. And uh, just want a quick shout out to our sponsors, Bailey's General Store, Spoon Drift Island Bowls, Gator Bites, Tail and Ale, and Three Crafty Ladies. Without them, this wouldn't be possible. Go check them out. So thanks very much from me, Nick. I'm Laurie. I'm Greg. I'm Max. Thanks, guys. Have a good one and join us on the next one.